Hey, how's it going? Rob here. So RockShox have released a bunch of new stuff, including a new Zeb, new Super Deluxe, Ultimate and Ultimate Coil. So in this video, I'm going to take a closer look at the RockShox Zeb. Inside is basically brand new. It's got a new damper called Charger 3, new air shaft, these cool new things called buttercups that I'll explain in a load more detail and I'll show you inside the buttercup as well because it's quite interesting. New Charger 3 damper, completely new damping circuitry as well, including a uh, high speed and low speed compression damping on completely new circuits. So I've been using the fork for about three, four weeks now and I've got 200 miles or so experience on it. And I've been using the previous Zeb for thousands of kilometers. So let's go through this fork in a load more detail. So looks like the Zeb we all know and love. Real chunky chiseled look. Beefy 38 millimeter stanchions and perfect for lots of hard hitting bikes including e-bikes. It's a really stiff chassis and the chassis itself is the same but it's what's inside that's changed and makes all the difference on this fork. So looking around the fork you can see a couple of changes. The adjuster at the top for the high speed and low speed looks totally different to the last one and it's now got these pressure relief valves that allow you to release air pressure build up. So now you can press the button, you can release any build up of pressure and restore it to how that fork should operate. So let's take a look at some of the technology in the fork. So RockShox claim that they've eliminated something called crosstalk. So crosstalk, what exactly is that? Well, you know, you've got your dial at the top of your fork with your high speed compression and your low speed compression. Now, as you change, let's say for example, your high speed compression and you dial it up or dial it down, it can actually also affect or does actually also affect the low speed compression as well. So think of it like this, when you're adjusting one, you're actually altering the performance of the other as well. Now RockShox say with this new Charger 3 damper, they've completely eliminated that. So any changes that you make to your high speed or low speed compression damping are completely independent of one another. So let me give you an example. You might be riding on a trail with loads of really big drops and big hits and big G outs, and you wanna protect the fork from bottoming out. So you could dial up the high speed compression, but you could also keep the low speed compression fair open to deal with some uh, some smaller lower speed stuff and keep the fork nice and supple. Now technically you've been able to do that on loads of forks forever but now on this fork because there's less crosstalk those changes are going to be more separate to each other. So now in this fork RockShox have moved to an internal floating piston. It's got a little coil spring in there so the piston's floating inside the damper so that's one big change. It's a big difference in architecture inside and looking at it it looks super intricate. It reminded me of a, like a real precision like watch or something looking in inside and checking out that high speed and low speed compression damping adjust within the actual fork. Now there's another big change as well called buttercup. This is in the uh, damper and the air spring and essentially it's a little rubber puck that lives at the bottom of the damper and the air shaft and what this is designed to do is to soak up any kind of trail chatter. You know that kind of buzz that you get that can give you fatigue when you're riding for hours and hours? Think of a hard packed trail that a digger's been driving down and it's dried and it's crusty and you're kind of blasting down it and you're going over the tire tracks. Well, all that chatter is now really reduced because these buttercups can actually soak up some of that chatter. Now, this is quite fascinating. I actually took it apart, had a look inside and it's a little puck and you can actually feel the movement. If you kind of put it together and put it on a desk and press it down, you can see that that moves inside. So within my 170 mil Z that I've got here, four millimeters of that is controlled with those little buttercups at the bottom here. And apparently it's a similar kind of technology that exists in uh, things like chainsaws. You can imagine holding a chainsaw and the vibration that goes through that. Well, some of that was remedied with these kind of buttercup style technology pucks that live within it to dampen those vibrations. Now RockShox are saying that when they tested this, this kind of high frequency chatter was reduced by about 20%. So in terms of adjustability, the Charger 3 has got 15 clicks of low speed compression and five clicks of high speed compression and 18 clicks of rebound. And on the other side, there's a new air spring called Debonair Plus. So RockShox claim it's plusher off the top. They've added mid-stroke support and it allows the fork to sit higher in the travel and use more of the travel. So all of these changes sound quite significant. So yeah, how does it ride? Well, I've been testing it for the past few weeks and 
pretty good. I set the fork up, started with the recommended pressure, 77 PSI. Uh, I weigh around 85 kilos. I'm riding it on a Trek rail, electric mountain bike. I checked inside the fork, it's got one token. Now I've also been testing the Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock as well. It has the same kind of internal changes as the fork, which is pretty significant. So again, a big change for this. But to make sure I could run with familiar settings, I stuck with the uh, regular coil that I've been using for some time. I will be doing a separate video on these, so subscribe if you want to be the first to see that. So as soon as you hit the trail, you can tell it's a super burly, very, very stiff feeling, very direct fork. And these forks are perfect for e-bikes with their 38 mil stanchions. They just feel more direct, like they hold lines much better than the Lyric on e-bikes. So when you've got a complete riding weight of like 110 kilos with my weight in the bike, the Zebs are perfect. And I love the way that it tracks over the terrain, just holds lines, it's not getting deflected and there's very little flex in it. So as a chassis, the Zeb feels fantastic. But what about the dampings? Now I've always found the Zeb quite sensitive off the top anyway. So on my very first ride, I actually found the fork a little bit over damped. So I reduced some of the air pressure out of it and actually took it down to a, I think 72 PSI. And I actually removed one token. So I ended up riding the fork with no tokens whatsoever. And that really allowed me to use all of the available travel for the trails that I ride. And personally, that's how I like to set forks up. I know some people like to always leave a little bit in reserve, but I, I like to use it all. If you've got 170 millimeters, I wanna use it all on the trails that I ride. And if I go to a different type of terrain, I just set the fork up, maybe put a little bit more PSI in it. Now I rode it in some super dry, really, really dusty conditions. And more recently we've had loads of rain. So the trails changed pretty dramatically because it went from really dry, really dusty, really hard to kind of really slick and loose on the top. And that gave me an opportunity to change the high speed and low speed compression damping to try and tackle those variations in the trail conditions. So in the dry and dusty conditions, the fork felt honestly sublime, loads of support. I really do notice that this fork tends to sit higher in the travel than other forks, tend to kind of use the first third and stays in there until it gets a little bit more compression. But compared to something like a, a 38, it tends to sit in that first third a little bit more, but then as the compressions kind of ramp up, the fork ramps up as well. And I did not hit a single bottom out on this fork and I managed to get all of the available travel to be used and I didn't hear any kind of clunks, any harsh bottoms out or anything. So let's talk about the buttercups. Now, I think that you would need to do a back-to-back -back comparison test with a non-buttercup fork to be able to really quantify the differences. But all I can say is that I didn't experience any hand fatigue. Some days the rides were four to six hours in length on the e-bike, didn't experience any hand fatigue in those real dry and dusty conditions. And the riding is starting to get a little bit faster now, it's dry and dusty the trail conditions are running really really sweet you can see it when you take the damper out it actually moves no doubt they're offering extra trail chatter reduction and that is a thumbs up from me buttercups are a sweet addition now in terms of servicing they do a kit that allows you to refresh them and you'll be able to change those little rubber pucks no doubt in there as well now the zeb's always been an amazing fork i put it on my long-term levo i rode it in the south of france in the alps i did 20,000 meters of descending in a few days on the Zeb Ultimate, the previous gen. So I've been a massive fan of that fork for a long time. I would say the damping performance offers a little bit more mid-stroke support. And in terms of that last third and bottom out performance, now I was really surprised that I didn't get any bottoms out when running zero tokens on an e-bike. And that ramp up in that last 20% of the travel seemed pretty decent. I was really surprised that I was unable to bottom out the fork. Yeah, and granted, if I was riding somewhere a bit more gnarly, a bit steeper, I might need to put a token in and add a little bit of PSI. But overall, in terms of the damping, performance RockShox have got a super strong product here and what about the new independent high speed and low speed compression well my typical usage with high speed and low speed compression is fine tuning it but I actually use this to my advantage when it got really wet so on my most recent rides after we've had loads of rain pounding the trails puddles everywhere what I was able to do is open up the low speed compression to allow that fork a little bit of freer movement just off the top and my aim with that was to try and allow the fork a little bit of extra movement on the low speed compression to track really nicely on some of the flatter turns and not kind of just get hung up in that grease and just slide out and I've got to say it worked 
I dialed down, I completely opened the low speed compression, you can definitely feel it. As soon as you start opening it up, the fork moves freer through the stroke and ultimately gave me more grip. So did exactly what it was designed to do. So how is it compared to something like the 38? Well, I've been running the Fox 38 e-bike optimized uh, which is a slightly different damper on my Trek rail. I think the RockShox Zeb tends to sit a little bit higher in the travels. So it changes the feel of the bike a little bit. You do get used to it fairly quickly. The 38 tends to be a bit freer to move through the travel. So there is some differences there. In terms of damping, it's a real tough one. I think I'm going to need to do a back-to-back -back test. Take them both out, put them in the van and just do one trail 10 times on one and do it again on another. If that's of interest to you, let me know down below and yeah, maybe I can make that video. But on the whole, RockShox have got an outstanding product here. The Zeb was already a brilliant fork. I was a massive fan of the Zeb and now better damping control, more independent high speed and low speed, buttercups to reduce the trail chatter, pressure relief valves. Yeah, they've made an outstanding product even better. So let me know your thoughts and your feedback. Pop your comments down below. I'll be sure to check them out and reply. And if you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up and subscribe for more bike content and I'll catch